Hey, shalom, good morning. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. That is Psalm 103, verse 8. It is the new, it is the King James Version of the Bible, the 1611 that we're looking at today. And uh, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. So, when we repent as Israelites, lift up our hands, face Jerusalem from wherever we are in the world, the Lord will have mercy on us. Whether you're descended from the Negroes or the uh, natives of the West, it doesn't matter. If this truth bears witness with your spirit, you need to repent as an Israelite. You may not know exactly what tribe you're from. You may not have never known your father. Many of us are fatherless and don't know our fathers or have never known our fathers. So uh, you may have to guess at what tribe you might be from. I just leave it at that until we know for sure when Christ our Messiah returns, okay? Black Messiah, that is. Today we are reading the Bible. We are in the book of 2 Maccabees. That is the last book of the Apocrypha, 14 books which were removed out of the Bible by the Protestant reformers back in the 1800s. Uh, one of their so-called councils where they also made Sunday the, the Sabbath. They made Mary the Queen of Heaven. They made God a three-headed uh, psycho, psychotic, a three-headed psychotic being. And... Uh, Jesus, some kind of angel, not having a uh, human nature as we do, uh, through something they call the Immaculate Conception, or the Virgin Birth. Okay, so they only have 66 books in there revised Bible, which removed 14 books. The Bible says if you take away anything out of this Bible, if you follow the Protestant Reformation, or even the Catholics, they took out seven of these apocryphal books. Your name will be blotted out of the Book of Life. If you take away from the words of this testimony, the words of this book, your name will be blotted out of the book of life. If you add to them, if you add anything to these, to this word, such as the Quran, Book of the Dead, Enoch, Jasher, etc., you're going to receive the plagues that are written in this book. So you people out there that are touting the book of Enoch and Jasher, just because they're mentioned in the Bible does not mean that you are not adding to the finished testimony, which was completed in 1611 at the behest and authorization of King James, the first of England, who was one of the last more kings, a black man. The story of Othello goes into this conspiracy to overthrow the Moors, the blacks, from power. Which I'm not saying the Moors were all saints as far as behavior. 
In fact, we were wicked. That's why we were thrown down. <laughs> And expelled from Portugal and Spain. Okay. Now uh, we're into the book of Second Maccabees and chapter eighteen. Book of Second Maccabees. Uh, wait a minute. Forgive me. We're in chapter nine. Book of Maccabees has fifteen chapters, and we are in chapter nine. Yeah, all praises. Please read along on the screen. If you have your Bible, open it up and read along with us. Or uh, if you're driving, then just listen. About that time. It is about that time. Read the Bible. Second Maccabees 9. If you've never read the Apocrypha, uh, please read it. I believe you can pick it up at Amazon or Barnes & Noble, or you can go to OriginalRoyalty.com, pick one up. Or you can just read it here online at King James Bible Online .org, King James Bible Online .org. Org. That's where we are right now. Okay. And click on the 1611 button at the very top. So you get all 80 books, not just 66. The Protestants also removed seven of these books. So that, that Bible is already included herein. They only have 73 books in their Bible. So don't buy the Jerusalem Bible or any Catholic Bible. Get a 1611 King James Bible if you want the entire 80 books in the Bible. It is a little bit more expensive. You can get it in a uh, hard, hard bound, uh, hardback. For approximately, I would say, less than fifteen dollars for a less expense, excuse me, less expensive version or a leather bound version, which is, I believe, the Oxford or I can't remember. You'd have to Google it, but uh, yeah, you can get one with you know leather bond, a little more better quality, better paper. Uh, quality for approximately hundred and twenty dollars thereabouts but shop around you could probably find a used one for a little less second Maccabees chapter 9 about that time came Antiochus with dishonor out of the country of Persia for he had entered the city called Persepolis Persepolis and went about to rob the temple and to hold the city. Whereupon the multitude running to defend themselves with their weapons put them to flight. And so it happened that Antiochus being put to flight of the inhabitants returned with shame. Now when he came to Ecbatana, news was brought him what had happened unto Nicanor and Timotheus. Then dwelling, then swelling with anger, he thought to avenge upon the Jews the disgrace done unto him by those that made him flee. Therefore commanded he his chariot man to drive without ceasing and to dispatch the journey. The judgment of God, not now, the judgment of God, now following him. For he had spoken proudly in this sort, that he would come to Jerusalem and make it a common burying place of the Jews. But the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. 
for as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remediless came upon him and sore torments of the inner parts. That's food poisoning. And that most justly, for he had tormented other men's bowels with many and strange torments. Howbeit, he nothing at all ceased from his bragging, but still was filled with pride, breathing out fire in his rage against the Jews, and commanding to haste the journey. But it came to pass that he fell down from his chariot, carried violently, so that, having a sore fall, all the members of his body were much pained. And thus he, that a little afore thought he might command the waves of the sea, so proud was he beyond the condition of man, and weigh the high mountains in a balance, was now cast on the ground, and carried in an horse litter, shewing forth unto all the manifest power of God, so that the worms rose up out of the body of this wicked man, and whilst he lived in sorrow and pain, his flesh fell away, flesh eating, and the filthiness of his smell was noisome to all his army. And the man that thought a little afore he could reach to the stars of heaven, this is the so-called white Caucasian European Edomite people. No man could endure to carry for his intolerable stink. And they do smell. Here, therefore, especially the woman, their woman, here, therefore, being plagued, he began to leave off his great pride and to come to the knowledge of himself by the scourge of God, his pain increasing every moment. And when he himself could not abide his own smell, he said these words, It is meet to be subject unto God, and that a man that is mortal should not proudly think of himself as if he were God. This wicked person vowed also unto the Lord, who now no more would have mercy upon him, saying thus, that the holy city to the which he was going in haste to lay it even with the ground, and to make it a common burying place, he would set at liberty. And as touching the Jews, whom he had judged not worthy so much as to be buried, but to be cast out with their children to be devoured of the fowls and wild beasts, he would make them all equals to the citizens of Athens. Is this America? Yes, this is America. And it is a product of the Greco-Roman Empire, an extension thereof, a mirror. They have the Senate, they have the architecture, they have the policies, all becoming one, equal, all citizens. We're not citizens, we're denizens. We have to uh, be voted every 25 years to be allowed to vote. <laughs> Chinese, Japanese, Africans, East Indians, uh, Arabians, uh, Russians, Irish, English, European, African, uh, Australian, uh, Chinese. Nobody else has to go through this. Nobody. Just us, the Negroes and the natives of the West. All right, here in the great white north, and it is great. It is Mystery Babylon the Great. And the holy temple, which before 16 he had spoiled, he would garnish with goodly gifts and restore all the holy vessels with many more, and out of his own revenue, defray the charges belonging to the sacrifices. So he's trying to bribe his way out of this 
uh, plague which he is suffering. Think he could buy God off. Yea, 17, and that also he would become a new a Jew himself. Oh, he's claiming to become a Jew now. He, got, he getting converted. He Amalek, Amalekite, uh, Kazarian, uh, what is it? Kazarian, uh, uh, what's the other word? There's the Khazars and uh, the Khazars and and there's, uh, those are German. And then you have the Russian, uh, Ashkenaz. The Ashkenaz is the German faction and the Khazarian is the Russian faction. And they're all Caucasian. They're all European, uh, uh, and descended from the Caucasus Mountains as far as say, Mount Seir, uh, which is Petra now. And uh, this is a race of men which descended from Esau, their progenitor, the first of a kind, uh, distinct from other races. Uh, which they cannot reproduce. They are not able to produce any other race except their own. That is a mule. That is a hybrid. He, he is a mule. <laughs> He's a hybrid. He cannot produce or reproduce any other race except his own. And that is a distinguishing mark of the Caucasian race. They are weaker than the Negroes and the natives of the West. In that sense, and in every other sense, eventually it's going to be a military and uh, <clears throat> it's spiritually true in Christ, under Christ, but in every other sense, including militarily and uh, as far as politically, it will become true under Christ, and when he returns here in a, in a minute, all praises the Black Messiah. Okay. Well, he would also become a Jew throughout all the world and go throughout all the world that was inhabited and declare the power of God. So he's going to become a Jew and an evangelist, <laughs> an international evangelist. Yeah. 18, but for all his, this, his pains would not cease, for the just judgment of God was upon, come upon him. Therefore, despairing of his health, he wrote unto the Jews the letter underwritten, containing the form of a supplication after this man, Antiochus, king and governor, to the good Jews, his citizens. Oh, they're good Jews now. Wishes much joy, oh, health and prosperity, joy, health and prosperity. If ye and your children fare well and your affairs be to your contentment, I give you very great thanks. I give very great thanks to God, having my hope in heaven. Ah, for sure. 21. As for me, I was weak, or else I would have remembered kindly your honor and good will. Returning out of Persia and being taken with a grievous disease, I thought it necessary to care for the common safety of all. Notice, these are Greco-Roman ideas. The common safety. The common uh, uh, security. National security. Not distur distrusting mine health, but having great hope to escape this sickness. So, yeah, he's suffering now in the flesh, and he wants to repent. That's how we all are. Many of us suffer in the flesh, and we want to repent. We cry out to God, oh, God. We continue to believe the Protestant and the Catholic and the Muslim religions and the Hindus and the Buddhists. Uh and uh, the scientism uh, of this uh, wicked world and put our trust in oppression thinking that this wicked scientist so self-proclaimed scientist <laughs> is going to save us 
their science is falsely so-called. It is based on lies. Everything that came out of their renaissance, their rebirth, including the religious doctrinal uh, traditions, etc., and their scientism, which is also religion, are based upon lies, complete, utter fabrication. Never trust your enemy. Never. They never voted. They never marched. They never uh, fought uh, what they call uh, peace, peaceful resistance. There was no peaceful resistance on their part. Everything they got, they got by the force of the sword violence. That is their gift. And that's how they've attained to the best and the highest rankings among us here on this world and in every part of it. For now. Especially in the north of Arsareth. To the end that if any fell out of contrary to Oh, wait, 23, but considering that even my father, at what time he led an army into the high countries, appointed a successor to the end that if any fell out contrary to expectation, or if any tidings were brought that were grievous, they of the land, knowing to whom the state was left, might not be troubled. So we support there state the state of their world we maintain it for them and they give us crumbs a few of us attain to more than crumbs or slightly more than crumbs uh, but we are still negroes and savages to them and just figureheads and uh, pacifiers those figureheads are tokens to pacify the masses, which we are the mass. We are the majority. The Bible says that we are the majority. Again, considering how that the princes that are borderers see the borders and neighbors unto my kingdom, <laughs> wait for opportunities and expect what shall be the event, I have appointed my son Antiochus king, whom I often committed and commended unto many of you. When I went up into the high provinces, to whom I have written as follows. So here we have a border dispute, just as we have here, but not with the northern border. <laughs> Those are our friends, of course. 26. Therefore, I pray and request you to remember the benefits that I have done unto you generally and in special, and that every man will be still faithful to me and my son. We are not faithful to him or his or their sons. We do not admire them. We do not follow them or their customs, traditions, religions, doctrines, or holidays, or birthdays, or anything that they propound, anything that they put forward, we do not follow them. We do not vote in their elections. We do not follow them at all. No, only to the extent that it's necessary for our... Uh, living our survival and we are at peace with all men we do not preach violence violence is not a part of our doctrine in the sense of presently we do preach and teach that they will be destroyed by our God in the future very very soon 
but we preach to be at peace as much as possible, but not doormats. Not effeminate doormats. <laughs> uh, for I am persuaded that he, understanding my mind, will favorably and graciously yield to your desires. So their programming of us, their brainwashing of us from birth, kindergarten, <coughs> is failing, and they are in a panic mode. And they're, they, they have contingencies. They're establishing precedents now to deal with this. 28. Thus the murderer and blasphemer, having suffered most grievously, as he entreated other men, so died he a miserable death in a strange country in the mountains. And Philip that was brought up with him carried away his body, who also fearing the son of Antiochus went into Egypt to Polydamas, Philometor, Philometor, Philometor. Okay, let's continue. I'll tell you, that's, that's one hell of a story there. The Maccabees, oh man. If you haven't read the Apocrypha, it's time to do so. There are 14 books. Here they are listed in this uh, index. If you uh, don't have one, you can just, if you can't afford to buy one right now, just read it online. Okay? And that's what we're doing. We're just reading the Bible. I have a few little comments, but basically we're just reading the Bible, okay? <clears throat> Okay, and we're up to chapter 15 of the book of Second Chronicles, which comes before the book of Ezra. And we're in chapter 15. The book of uh, Second Chronicles contains 36 chapters. We're reading the 15th chapter this morning. Good morning to everyone. Shalom, peace, and the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. We're in Second Chronicles chapter 15. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa, and said unto him, Hear me, hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you, while you be with him. So these so-called religious who claim God is in love with them but refuse to keep any of his commandments, God is not with them. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. He'll be blotted out. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God. And that's right now. You know? And, uh, just a minute. Put some music on in the background for us. Okay, now for a long season Israel has been without the true God. We've been worshiping a European, Caucasian, pale, <clears throat> fake God, and it's idolatry, and we need to stop it. We must repent. And without law, and without a teaching priest, and without law. Our priests, our pastors, our teachers, our leaders do not teach God's law. And they teach a false Christ. This is not Christ that they teach. That is not Christ. Okay? He is not a pale, effeminate uh person dangling from a piece of wood. That is not Christ. 
And if you choose to follow that thing, God is not with you. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. That's happening today. We're having trouble. We're being troubled on every front. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city. It's happening today. For God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. The only reason this country is not totally overrun and devastated by chaos, etc., is because God wills it. And that is for yours and my sake. And what is that? That we have the liberty to proclaim this gospel of a black Messiah, exclusive to the children of Israel everywhere, that have been scattered through slavery, uh, oppression, genocide, and descended from the Negroes and the natives of the West. That this gospel registers and sounds right that it might be speaking to you, that you may be a descendant of these people somehow through some means in your family tree. Or you just feel that this is the right way to go. Don't shrug it off. Don't just ignore that feeling. Go to the internet. Go to your Bible. Begin to read, begin to study, begin to pray. Ask God for guidance. Seek out those who believe this in your area and get together with them. And when Asa heard these words, verse 8, and the prophecy of Obed, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols. That's what we must do. Put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renew the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and Manasseh and out of Simeon. For they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So not all the northern kingdom is following idols. There is a remnant that's following the true God of Israel. And that remnant is beginning to return now. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa, and they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. And also concerning Macha, the mother of Asa the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the brook of Kedron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated, and he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war unto the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. So there still existed some remnant of that 
idolatry in the land which had not been dealt with okay and that is true today in Israel a woke woke Israel there's still some remnant of that former idolatry which remains that's to be expected if it happened to them it's going to happen to us just as if whatever happened to Christ is going to happen to us as well we're going to be persecuted the Bible says we're in the book of Exodus which comes after Genesis and before Leviticus book of Exodus contains 40 chapters we're in the 18th all praises 18th book or chapter of Exodus now uh, we're into the season of the new year and uh, we're into the time of celebrating the Passover where the Lord killed the firstborn of all the Egyptians all their cattle and animals and delivered us out of the hand of the Egyptians the bondage hard bondage uh, we're celebrating that now we must do away with any leaven in our homes any leavening agents do the spring cleaning that's where spring cleaning comes from the word or the idea of spring cleaning comes from the concept of Passover it comes from our people and it's a good thing to do and uh, we should each do that clean out your toaster your microwave your car anything that contains leaven get rid of it uh, including including crackers and uh, baking soda baking powder uh, cookies any kind of bread any kind of uh, cake mixes anything like that any kind of self rising flour get rid of it don't give it away throw it away don't sell it throw it away okay even toothpaste that contains baking soda get rid of it okay all praises <clears throat> we're in the 18th chapter of the book of Exodus when Jethro the priest of Midian Moses father-in-law heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt then Jethro Moses father-in-law took Zipporah Moses wife after he had sent her back and her two sons of which the name of the one was Gershom where he said I have been an alien in a strange land and the name of the other was Eli Ezer for the God of my father said he was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh and Jethro Moses father-in-law came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness where he encamped at the Mount of God and he said unto Moses I thy father-in-law Jethro am come unto thee and thy wife and her two sons with her and Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed him and they asked each other of their welfare and they came into the tent and Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake and all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how the Lord delivered them and Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians and Jethro said blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods for in the thing wherein they dealt prob proudly he was above them and Jethro Moses father-in-law took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God and Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses father-in-law before God 
And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone? And all the, all the people stand by thee from morning unto even. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people came unto me to come unto me to inquire of God. And when they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. What is uh, the primary thing Moses does? He judges and makes the law of God known to the people. That is the primary purpose of a leader. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away, both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel. And God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God work, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt shew them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. What is the work? What are good works? What are good works? Ordinances and laws. What is our work? Following the commandments, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them, to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, and rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge, so shall it be easier for thyself and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. Thank you for stopping. Most time, Christ bless you. Have a great week. Thursday night begins. The Passover of our God, it is a holy convocation, and we must gather. It is one of the three holy days where all men must come before the Lord. And we must eat unleavened bread, roasted lamb, and bitter herbs. And have a holy convocation and celebration before the Lord together. That's Thursday night until Friday night, and then begins the Sabbath. This is a double Sabbath, so today and tomorrow, please prep for that. Get all the leaven out of your homes. Get some unleavened bread. You must eat unleavened bread every day, some unleavened bread every day for the next seven days beginning uh, Thursday evening. Okay? Most time, Christ bless you. Shalom. Peace be with you.